up, Devils? J Dog back for another segment of Devils Ass. J Dog answers for you here. Bring them right up on my phone. I told you, I've been getting back behind the comments. I got about five videos I still got to do, five videos worth of comments I still got to do. So I'm going to go back and what am I like? Yeah, I'm, I'm on number four, number five of what I haven't uh, completed yet. And this one here I'm bringing up is the second albums by a band that are better than their first. This one's got a, didn't have as many views as uh, some of the others. It's a decent amount compared to the others, but it's got a shitload of comments. So I'm loving it. Keep them coming, God damn it. So yeah. Let me answer the questions in here for you and give you your shout out. And you know how we do it over here. So here we the fuck go. From Jane D Jay Dinkins. Comments on pretty much every fucking video, it seems like. Question, has there ever been any talk about putting the Great Shadow Infiliator by a Faith Extractor out on vinyl? Uh, no talk of it. We Obviously, we worked with uh, Faith Extractor a couple times. Uh, we still have the uh, Proverbial al album still in stock. They're just definitely kind of a slower moving band. So if we were to do it, it would be um, we'd have to uh, we'd want to preferably wait, wait for the others to sell out. Uh, I don't know why that. Yeah, they. Uh, I think Faith Extractor is a really good band. So if you guys haven't ever checked them out, uh, check them out. I mean, um, it's just it, it's it's nothing fancy. It's just straight up fucking like U.S. '90s death metal. Uh, but it, yeah, it's good good jam and stuff. And just but it doesn't it doesn't move very very well. So it's I don't know why. I mean, uh, there's bands that like we get in and stuff that suck complete ass or. They're the same style and and flies out the fucking door. You know what I mean? I I don't, I don't get it. I, I'll give you an example. Like uh, I think the band's decent, but it's a local. Faith Extractor's local. Well, they're Ohio from, from Cincinnati, but a local band here too. I don't know the guys personally, I think, but they're from Ohio. Is the band Two Hundred Stab Wounds? And uh, I think it's you know it's solid death metal or whatever, but I don't think it's any better than like Faith Extractor. But it flies out the door and they're getting huge. And here they're touring with Soulflight or something now. It's it's like. Sucks to be them, I guess, but at the same time, good for them because it's obviously going to be a hell of a lot of good exposure. Going to get a hell of a lot of fucking yo boy posers uh, there, but whatever. As far as a business, good business move. But I just don't get it. Like, why is everybody loving 200 stab wounds, but like Faith Extractor, they don't check out? I just, I don't, like, to me, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, but that's just kind of the name of the game. You know, you get one sometimes that you would never guess. But yeah, it hasn't been brought up for that reason, but you never know in the future. Oh. <sighs> Next question. Teddy Spaghetti Night Massacre. <laughs> Night Massacre. I, I've seen this. I think I commented on his last, last video. It's just a funny-ass fucking name. Kind of a tongue twister. Thanks for replying to my question. Here is another. Thanks for keeping the Empatago gear and releases in stock. Any chance of getting a box of everything else pressed? Love that fucking band. Uh, you know what? It's funny you say that. Now, no, we are not doing a box set by him, but I think... Uh, don't quote me on this. I want to say "fuck off and die." Records is doing a box set of their stuff, and the reason I know this is because what what I did want to do was um, reissue CDs of the uh, first two albums on those digi book CDs, like how we did the regurgitations, the uh, second pressing, and the Balmer Emanations album. That those really really nice digi books. Uh, we just got in the Necrophagia Season of the Dead, uh, not the regular digi packs. The digi they're actually like books, like it's a bound book with a spot like a. Uh, Hardbound spine and everything. That's why I want to do the Epitagos. And uh, Mark said he was up for it. It's cool. But he wanted um, the fuck off and die. I'm pretty sure it's fuck off and die. I could be wrong on the label, but I'm pretty sure it's them uh, for his stuff to come out first and sell out. I don't know if it's a CD box or an LP box. That I can't remember. But nonetheless, I know something is coming out by Epitago, the albums. Uh, but it's not by us. And then uh, and then hopefully our uh, fucking... Uh, just, God damn, this fucking phone's going off. Who the fuck texts this guy? Why do they wait to text me when I'm doing a goddamn fucking video? You realize this fucking phone doesn't go off for fucking days? Like, literally nobody texts me, right? And then when I'm doing a video, some fucking cocksucker will text me. Like, what the, don't text me, God damn it. What's important? Don't text me. All right, uh, next goddamn question. These are just more so comments. Uh, from Ozel Macklin. Question. I understand you most of the time prefer the demos over the big production studio albums. Um, yes and no. That's not necessarily true, but I do like a lot of demos over... Yeah, yeah I'd say 50-50. However, are there any super polished productions you liked? Uh, also, if you don't mind answering further, what elements stand out to you as something being overproduced? Or as we call in my circle, Willie Putinade. You know what? I never was a big fucking fan of that just... People like like talking like they're sound engineers or something. You know what I mean? I get if something kind of sounds like shit, then it sounds like shit. Uh, my main thing is like overproduced is like sometimes if the triggers sound really fake and and just 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 uh, clickety like a fucking typewriter. I don't like that. 
Other than that, I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, like, for example, like most of Vader albums, um, those would be considered overproduced, right? Technically, Cannibal Course, isn't that overproduced? I don't know. It's a good polished studio. The, the last few Deicides, wouldn't that be overproduced? I mean, it would technically, would Surface of Light be overproduced? Those are some of my favorite records. So, um, I guess I like overproduced garbage, but I mean, like, I, I mean, I don't want everything to sound like it's in a fucking garage, but some of that has its character too. Like, for example, uh, the Death and Mantis demos, I love how those sound. Um, it just has, it gave a fucking character. Same with the, uh, like the Massacre demos. I did like the Massacre demos better than, uh, From Beyond much more. It just had more character and shit. But I mean, I think it was a combination of how they played the songs and the energy in the air and the recording. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't need to always be some demo fucking garage recording to be good. If it's good songs, it's good songs. But yeah, other than like I said, the, the uh, triggery fucking drums that it might sound like ass. I don't know if the songs are good. The songs are good. I, I don't know about these fucking sound engineers that they're it's like, do you like music or are you fucking a, a goddamn rec recording fucking studio? I don't know. So yeah, I don't know if it's good shit. It's good shit. That's what I see it. Hey, what's crack? Uh, this is from Pine Box Slumber Party. I don't think I've seen that him comment on things in the uh, comments yet. Don't recognize the name, anyways. Hey, what's crack? And Jade, uh, I've been spinning the Misfits lately, and I know you like them too. Sure do. I personally like the early Glenn Danzig era. Just curious on which Misfits era you like the best. Have you ever seen them live? And do you have any Misfits worship bands you can suggest? <laughs> Uh, I like everything pretty much by the Misfits, but yeah, Glenn, the Danzig era is my favorite for sure. But the Michael Graves era and then the Jerry Only albums, I like those as well. Uh, in that order, so Michael, the Danzig stuff's my favorite. Then Michael Graves and the Jerry Only stuff is my least favorite, but I but I still do like it. I even like that '50s cover album they did, which is kind of uh, weird for me because I don't I don't really like like I barely like any classic rock. I, I sure as hell don't like stuff from the fucking '50s and '60s. Uh, for the most part, I thought their songs they were I really enjoyed it so. I did like it, so uh, I thought for sure like when that first came out, there's no way I'm going to like it. But at that point, I owned, I think I did own every single Misfits record up to that point. So I was like, ah, well, pick it up, check it out for the collection. And that's what I did. This was before YouTube and shit. Or I'm pretty sure that was before YouTube. That was early 2000s that came out, I believe. Because I got it right around when it first came out. And, uh, yeah, so in that order, and Jerry, I think that is the first release Jerry sings on. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be a single or something. I'm pretty sure that's the first release Jerry sings on. And I do like that, too. And uh, Devil's Reign, I like, but um, there's a couple songs on there I thought were kind of uh, filler stinkers. But as a whole, I liked it. Uh, what the fuck else did he ask? Oh, have I ever seen them live? Yeah, I have seen them live two or three times. Uh, only with I've only seen them with Jerry singing. Uh, I can say this: I definitely enjoyed them live, but uh, they have probably. I didn't imagine. I never. I've never gone to a Slayer concert for this reason. They have definitely one of the most annoying uh, fan base crowds I've ever seen. This is a bunch of kids and just fucking just extremely annoying people there at the show. So uh, seeing them live is cool. They put on a good show, but extremely annoying fucking people at the shows. Um, and I, I did want to go to, what was it, a few years ago when there was the classic lineup that they did uh, with Danzig. And there was a few one-off shows, but we looked up tickets. And somebody told me the tickets at the last one, what was it, in New York or maybe Jersey, they were like literally like $1,000 a ticket. I'm like... I, I don't know. That sounds like some bullshit to me. I, was like, I can't see that. But supposedly that was the case. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you guys win, I'm like, well, there's no fucking way in fucking paying a thousand dollars for a goddamn ticket. I don't want to see anybody that goddamn bad. I mean, so uh, yeah. So I, so I didn't see that. But uh, if it was a Cleveland show and it was a reasonable fucking price, uh, I would have gone to the um, the uh, reunion show too, the, the the classic lineup. So only the Jerry only stuff I've seen. Never even seen uh, the Michael Graves there. He's already done. By the time I got to Misfits, because I got to Misfits a little bit late. I got my Misfits when I was in the tw my 20s, because, like, before, I was just kind of, like, strictly death death metal, black metal, well, just strictly metal in general. And I started appreciating other stuff like punk and stuff until I was about, I think I was 22, so about 15 years ago now. So, to me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a late bloomer and newbie to the punk scene. Uh, holy shit, that's a long comment there. Uh, there's another question uh, from Eric G., Forgot to ask in the last video, but whose idea was it for the Nunslaughter 8 track? And how big a pain in the ass was it to get them produced? Thanks, brah. Uh, enormous fucking pain in the ass. As a matter of fact, uh, I think we're still waiting on one of them because we're supposed to be doing the Hells and Holy Fire and Goat, and it's something Don wanted. And um, it took like a fucking year to get them made. I mean, yeah, huge fucking pain in the ass. I mean, luckily, I think we did put a disclaimer on there, like pre order being the pre I think we're way past the pre order date of what it was. But disclaimer, like, uh, I think there's some type of disclaimer. I, was like, I, 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 
I wasn't for it. I don't care about the Don Juan or whatever. It's at your band, and if people are cool with waiting, and then whatever. But uh, I thought it was kind of like unnecessary. But yeah, that's what he wants. It's what he wants. Whatever. Uh, crazy Mr. BWK. Great videos. Love the metal talk. What are your thoughts on Empatago? Second guy to talk about Empatago. Oh, I love him. Huge Empatago fan. Love both albums. Uh, Henrik K. Here again. Uh, would you say that the metal scene is stronger now compared to, to 10 or maybe even 20 years ago? Globally or just the U.S.? Your choice. And as far as what stronger would mean, I guess that's up to you as well. Well, uh, I, I can't really speak on globally because, I, I mean, I have been out of the country, but it's was over 10 years ago the last time I was. And, you know, I wasn't exactly a fucking world traveler. I've just been, to, you know, one or two other countries, three different countries in my lifetime. Yeah, kind of four. Depends if you care stuff like Dominican and Bahamas or something like that. Kind of like U.S. whatever. Anyways, whatever. I wasn't fucking, it was for a little trip. I wasn't fucking, you know, like I said, uh, world traveling. So can't really comment on globally because I'm just, I see what you see fucking over here. Uh, as a whole, I would say metal's more popular. Now, does that make it stronger? I don't know. I mean, it's uh, from a business standpoint, as far as stuff staying around in physical for format, I mean, it's a good thing for that. It can't be annoying because more popular means more fucking, uh, juggalos that you don't want to want to kind of pollute in our scene in a sense right so they kind of come along with the territory so i guess you take the good with the bad right so it's kind of that where i would say as a whole you have to talk about popularity yeah it's stronger now than 20 years ago stronger now than 40 years ago it's only getting more and more popular but i will say this is it's just not the same as it used to be where there was like when we did that hellcast episode the death metal spirit and like it just seems like everybody's a lot of walk in now, and you can look well, however you, you don't even have to wear you don't have to wear metal shirts, you don't have to have long hair. Not that I have long hair, but although I did used to cut it because it's starting to look like shit. Gotta let that, gotta know when you let that shit go, guys. If your hair's look, falling out and looking like ass and all broken and damaged, don't just rock it because you're supposed to. If it looks like shit, it looks like shit. If it still looks good, then keep it. I say, but fuck, some of these guys rock this. Oof, you're way past due. Yeah, get rid of that crap, man. It looks like ass. Anyways, but I mean, like. To me, yeah, still metal is like you're wearing, you know, you wear metal t-shirts, it's black clothes, it's, you know, it's leather jackets, it's spikes, it's patches, it's pens, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's collecting records. It's just, it's kind of like a lifestyle, right? And now it just seems like any Tom, Dick, and Harry could just fucking walk in and just claim they're in the fucking death metal because, you know, they listen to Cannibal Corpse on the weekends with their drinking buddies, right? Like, I'll give a little fun story. I don't know how true this is. It was one of our, uh, it was a friend of, a, like, of King Fowley. There's a friend of King Fowley's. He told me this story, and I always thought it was fucking hilarious. And I think I vaguely told it on uh, Head Bash, and so I wasn't there. This was a, this is before my time, too. I think this was late 80s, early 90s, before I was in the scene and I was alive, but, you know, not, not in the metal yet. I was, you know, playing with G.I. Joe's, probably. <laughs> but there was a party going on that King Fowley was holding, he'd call it Death Bash. And uh, supposedly, <laughs> this guy, was, I think he walked in with them, or he came with the guy, or, or he was already at the party, whatever, but he observed it. And somebody comes in with the party. I don't remember the guy's name that came or whatever, but I think King knew who he was or whatever. Or maybe he didn't know who he was. I don't know. But he somebody invited the party. I guess there's a shitload of people there. And the guy has like a sweater on. And he goes up and he opens up the door that comes in. As soon as he opens the door, King just looks at him, punches him in the fucking face, knocks him the fuck out to the ground. He says, that's what you get for wearing a sweater at Death Bash. So to, to me, that's fucking great. Maybe a little bit overkill, but kind of the point being is that seems like the glory old days. Like you just didn't let anyone in. Like I remember even like in the late nineties, early two thousands, when I was going to shows and, you know, still very young, it's just kind of like, yeah, you saw posers there and shit like that. You saw a guy with baggy blue jeans or this fucking baggy fucking corn hoodie or something like that. The, all the true people ripped on those people. Kind of like, look at this fuck. Like, what's he doing here? There was that vibe in the air. Like, everyone knew. Now, it's just like, it's just like a fucking free-for-all. Just walk on in. Just come into our scene. Fuck yeah, open border. No wall over here, right? <laughs> That's what we need. There's a fucking metal wall, right? Don't let the fucking outsiders in. So, I'm all for uh, it getting bigger and more popular. But I want, like, you know, fucking the true metal spirit. I and mean, it's kind of a lifestyle. Not just some fucking, uh, some shithead that goes to church on the weekends. And then just fucking, you know, listen to this crap when it's when the, when the cool people are around, right? That's kind of my vibe. So bigger, but a lot more annoying people. I'm sure there's an even little bigger, though. You get There probably is a lot of true guys, too, that are coming into it, too, with that. But anything where there's more quantity of anything, you take the bad with the good, right? So that's at least my take on it. So if it was up to me, though, I prefer a little bit more underground, go back to the glorious old days. You know, you get punched in the face for wearing a goddamn fucking sweater. Sounds suiting to me. <laughs>
Uh, next goddamn question where we're at. Holy shit. Uh, from Life Eternal. I answered up. He's got... Basically thinks uh, a lot of the shit I said was funny. Need to check out uh, Merciless. Treasure Within by Merciless. Will I think I, like I said, I think I half heard that one. But I don't know. It's, um, I just know The Awakening. And I, and I really like that. So yeah, I guess I got to check out other albums by Merciless. I'm pretty sure they're very different though from what I remember. But hey, it could be still really good shit. But anyways, his question was, uh, yeah, you thought the mention that would have been cool to see you interview Glenn Benton. Uh, you got any... Good mortician worship bands. See, I thought that was actually a pretty good question because the closest thing I could think of is uh, the band Fluids, who I do like. Uh, for me, Fluids is good, and I do enjoy them, and I'm glad to be part of them when we put out their stuff. But to me, mortician still reigns supreme. So it's kind of like I like them, and I'm glad to see a band like that come out because it's kind of for the new generation, for these kids to kind of hear that because, you know, mortician hasn't put out an album. What was the last year? Reanimated Dead Flesh was the last mortician album. What year was that? I think it was like... Fuck, was that like 07, 08? I mean, it's well over 10 years ago when that came out. So they're kind of like, I think all they do is do shows. It's kind of like a repulsion thing, which I'm fine with. That's cool. That's what they want to do. I mean, they have several albums under the belt, and I don't really think they need to do another album. If they do, I will definitely check it out. Probably like it, too, because I like everything by Mortician. But uh, the only band I can think of is Fluids. And uh, to me, uh, Mortician still reigns supreme, so it's kind of like, eh, you know, Fluids is cool. But, I mean, if I'm going to pick one, I'm always going to pick Mortician over Fluids. But I'm glad to see that kind of music coming out because... Other than Fluids, I literally can't think of a single band that, to me, I think sounds like Mortician. Like, I can't think of, I can't think of anybody. Like, there has been, I can't, I'm drawing a blank. I remember there's a band here and there where I'm like, oh, that kind of sounds like a Mortician riff. Just that one little small part. But as far as, wow, this sounds like Mortician, Fluids is the only band. You know, with the drum machine. Uh, has really low vocals. Not quite as low as Will's. But the, the really down-tuned guitars and obviously the movie samples everything. It's just really, and a lot of those the riffs, I'm like, Fluids almost, and part of it, I wouldn't be a complaint, but I would call it out, but I think it was intentionally done, so it's not really a complaint or call out. Some of the riffs sound like, this literally sounds like almost a mortician cover. I mean, there was a couple songs where I'm like, is this a fucking zombie apocalypse cover? Like, I literally, like, at first I thought it was. It was that reminiscent. So that might have been a little too much, because it's like almost like you're ripping off riffs. But um, nonetheless, good band, and that's the only band I can think of that sounds like mortician. Funny thing about mortician is, too, is, so yeah, as you guys know, we did all the LPs by them and stuff like that. It took probably by probably about the third LP we did, which I don't remember which was. Because uh, like I said, we did Hot Enough for Barbecue first. I don't remember which one we did second. Maybe House by the Cemetery? House by the Cemetery, Zombie Apocalypse? Maybe we did those at the same time? I don't remember, but whatever. It, it wasn't like... When we first put out Hot Enough for Barbecue, granted, we were much, much smaller at that time. We were just like two, three years in the label. It's like, the, you notice that they didn't fly off the shelf. Yeah, they sold. But it, it, what I'm getting at is it took a few years for people to kind of catch on. Mortician's kind of popular now. Like anytime we have something in stock, like we trade for their CDs or we get uh, shirts or whatever, it sells very, very well now. When they were around at the time, yes, they had their fan base, but they weren't popular at all. If you went to a show and they were headlining, there were probably about 50 people there. Hell, when I saw them on the Chainsaw Dismemberment Tour in 1999, skinless open for them, I'm not even exaggerating. Crowd-wise, there was like 15 people there, literally, like literally 15 people. Um, now, you I mean, shit, you might, if Mortician was a headline, fuck, you might 300 people easily. Um, so it's kind of like they're more popular now, but at the time, people like, back then, they'd rip on them all, oh, there's bands, there's fucking, all the songs sound the same, there's more movie intros than music, which is not even true, drum machine sounds like shit, blah, 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 just everybody fucking ripped on them, you know what I mean? Like I said, they had their, they had their diehard community like myself, but I'm kind of like, Kind of like one of the diehards that's been there since, I want to say day one, because they've been around since early 90s. But early on, you know, I, I've known, been a fan of them since the late 90s. Like, not not just a fan, a huge fucking fan. Uh, like, one of my favorite bands fan. And I kind of like, I, I watched all the posers come in. Like, hey, you didn't like them back then? You wouldn't have liked them back then. It's just kind of funny how the trends follow. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So, no other bands I can think of uh, that sound like uh, Mortician, other fluids. If you if you know any bands that, and like again, not like a riff. This is similar. Like like sound sounds like Mortician. Oh, that's kind of what I was trying to say too. When people were ripping on them back in the day, I would put the witness test. Like, okay, so you don't like Mortician, but I t tell you this: who, if you walked in the room, I've said this to a couple of people that, admittedly, even to this day, they don't like Mortician. They're like, yeah, I'll give them that. That's true. I was like, if you walked in the room. And, we're, and I was listening to Mortician. You had no idea what, we, what I put on. I didn't preface it, nothing. I just was listening in the background. You happen to walk in. I was like, I guarantee you within 30 seconds, you would know it was Mortician, even though you're not a fan. It's like, yeah, I agree. So that's that's kind of an accomplishment in death metal, a really distinct sound, because 
you can't say that for bands like Immolation, Incantation, stuff like that, unless you know the songs, because there's a lot of other bands that sound very much like Immolation, very much like Incantation, bands that sound like Cannibal Corpse, bands that sound like Suffocation, bands that sound like DSI. And I'm not taking away from those bands. I love all those bands, but literally, like, you put on Mortician, you know it's fucking Mortician. Other than with the exception now, I could see someone mistaking fluids for Mortician um, because they sound that much the same. So it's kind of like to be a really brutal death little band and to, and to be that standout-ish where everybody in the scene who's ever heard them would be able to identify them, to me, that's a hell of a fucking accomplishment and you created a fucking sound. So Greta's Greta's do, right? That's the way I fucking see it. Uh, from Scott Tanix, One's Metal Dungeon. What's the status on Cursed Moon? Is it done? Is it Hellraiser now? Or is it a follow-up coming to Raid of Darkness? Also new Acid Witch full length. Uh, I don't, honestly don't know on either. Um, these bands do what they want. They kind of don't send in uh, updates. Uh, I will say this. I knew he did the uh, Hellraiser stuff with Reaper. I thought that was really, really good. Is he doing more Hellraiser? Is he doing more Crystal I don't know. That'd be a question for him. Um, we don't really kind of follow up. When bands come to us with their stuff, hey, I got a new album ready, kind of like the answer to Acid Witch too. Slasher has nothing done, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, he didn't say anything to Chase. I asked Chase not that long ago, hey, what about a new acid? Which had no idea. I said, he didn't say anything to me. I mean, I'm sure he's up for doing it, but does he have anything? When I say a new album, like, it's in the works. It's already at least written. And he's like, oh, come, you know, I'm going to go record in June or whatever. No word of that. So to me, there's, there's nothing coming anytime soon. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. I'd like, hopefully, new stuff about, by both those bands. <laughs> Let's see here. More just comments, comments. Where's the goddamn questions, guys? Here we go. Last question. This is probably which already 20 minutes in it. We'll make this the last one, too. Last question on the video. And this will be the last question I answer. Uh, from Fraser Dawson. J Dog, another question. Do you like new wave of British heavy metal? Example Saxon, Dragon Slayer, Incubus. Not the gay ass Incubus. Not the pop rock or pop rock on Incubus from England Demon. And my local record store order shout exchange again. Kurt, yep, yep. Sweet to see you, Kurt. Um, uh, do you think I just wrong up an order for you like last week? Appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess for me, like, where, where did that term new wave of British heavy metal came up, come up from? And, and in my opinion, kind of like, why? Like, it's not really necessary. Am I missing something? To me, I just, that whole style of music to me is just, is this heavy metal? Is it, it, and I like some heavy metal. So, like, Iron Maiden's considered that, right? I like them. Is, is Motorhead considered them? I, I think so. I like that. I mean, if it's not from Britain, is it considered it? So, like, a band like Metal Lucifer, who's in the genre of that, is that considered new wave of British heavy metal? I don't know. I just call I just called all that shit heavy metal, and I do, and I, and I like I like Metal Lucifer a lot. What about Savage Master? That's a newer band. Uh, is that new wave of British, or it's not because it wasn't from the '80s and it's not from England, or I don't fucking know. I just called it all heavy metal, and I and and I like Savage Master as well. So, yeah, I like bands. I like heavy metal bands if they're called new wave of British heavy or or old wave or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I like some of those bands. Um, not nowhere near as much as uh, uh, death metal, obviously. But yeah, I mean, like I, I throw in the same category when I say heavy metal. I talk about bands like Black Sabbath, early Ozzy Osbourne, uh, early Priest. Um, yeah, I like all that stuff. Uh, but I just I I always lump that as one as kind of like uh, just just heavy metal. So kind of like a lot of the people like I I separate it, but I understand like some people lump in like if they're not like if they like death metal, but it's not like their bread and butter. Maybe they're more of a black metal guy. They might lump in like death metal and grindcore as one. Of like if you mentioned Terrorizer, Napalm, Death Carcass, they just throw that as a death metal because like ah, it's kind of close to the same thing. And I understand, you know, I differentiate it and I say it like to me, Hemorrhage is like a gore grind band, Napalm, Death is like a grindcore band, First Terrorizer is like a grindcore album, et cetera. You know, Carcass early stuff is considered like gore grind, the beginning of gore grind, uh, General Surgery more gore grind. But if someone just lumps in it with death metal, I'm not like this fucking idiot. I, I get it. It's it's it's, it's kind of like. You know, they're pretty damn close. I mean, obviously very, very similar. So yeah, that's kind of how I always lumped in the NWO or BHM thing. And I don't even know the full story behind it. I honestly don't. Because uh, to me, I just thought it was like a long fucking tongue-twisting term that was unnecessary. Like, it's heavy metal. I like, and I like some heavy metal. So, yeah. There you have it. All right, guys. That knocks out all the questions for that video. And I will get to the other next few videos, comments here uh, in a day or two. And I'll do those as well. So keep those goddamn comments coming on the, all the videos coming out. And when you see this one... Keep them coming, so that way I can fucking do more videos and ask your shit. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.